Powdered milk, also known as dried milk, comes from removing all the water from liquid milk. This process turns it into a powder. The main reason to dry milk is to keep it from going bad. Unlike liquid milk, powdered milk can last much longer and doesn't need to stay in the fridge. The idea of drying milk isn't new. Back in the 13th century, Marco Polo talked about how Kublai Khan's soldiers would take sun-dried milk with them on long journeys. Nowadays, we use a different method to dry the milk. We spread it into thin layers and then heat it up on rollers. This turns the milk into a dry form without losing its nutritional value. Making milk into powder also makes it really convenient. You can take it anywhere, and it's perfect for times when you don't have fresh milk available. Plus, it's a great way to store milk for emergencies or long-term use without worrying about it spoiling. This method of preserving milk has been a game-changer, making it accessible and practical for people all around the world. Turning liquid milk into powdered milk means removing almost all the water. This leaves behind a dry product that can sit on the shelf for a long time without going bad, sometimes for years without needing to be in the fridge. Even though it's not as popular as regular milk, powdered milk is really important in many situations. For places without refrigerators, like some developing countries, areas hit by disaster, or on long trips into space, it's a reliable way to get important nutrients. In the world of food making, powdered milk is key for a lot of products. Whether it's in baked goods, sweets, coffee creamers, or baby food, its ability to last a long time, its ease of use, and consistent taste make it a favorite for those who make these products. Also, because it's affordable and easy to handle, powdered milk is great for big programs that feed lots of people, like in schools or through aid for those in need. The process of turning liquid milk into powdered milk has been around for quite some time, with the earliest methods being patented back in the beginning of the 20th century. Initially, roller drying was the go-to technique for making milk powder. This method ruled until the 1960s when spray drying took over due to its efficiency. Nowadays, producing milk powder is a significant industry, especially in the 21st century. Creating milk powder isn't complicated, and it can be done on a large scale. The goal is to remove water from the milk in the most cost-effective way possible while keeping everything we love about milk, its color, taste, solubility, and nutritional benefits. When you look at whole milk, about 87% of it is water. For skin milk, it's around 91%. The process to make milk powder starts by reducing this water content. This is done by boiling the milk at a low temperature under reduced pressure, a method known as evaporation. After this step, the thickened milk is sprayed into hot air in a fine mist. This hot air takes away more moisture, leaving behind milk powder. From 100 liters of whole milk, you can get around 13 kilograms of whole milk powder or 9 kilograms of skim milk powder. But why is it important to keep an eye on the humidity in this process? Well, the answer lies in efficiency and cost of drying. By closely monitoring the temperature and relative humidity of the air coming in and going out of the dryer, manufacturers can ensure the dryer works at its best. Typically, two probes are installed for each dryer, one at the inlet and one at the outlet. These probes measure relative humidity and temperature. Using this information helps adjust the drying process to ideal settings. This not only ensures the milk powder comes out just right, but also cuts down on energy cost by avoiding over-drying or under-drying. This careful balance is crucial for maintaining the quality of the milk powder while also being mindful of production costs. When raw milk arrives at the dairy factory, it undergoes pasteurization first. Pasteurization is a crucial step that kills harmful bacteria without compromising the milk's nutritional value. After pasteurization, the milk is ready for separation. Using a centrifugal cream separator, the milk is divided into skim milk and cream. This process leverages the density difference between the milk's components, allowing for the extraction of cream while leaving behind the skim milk. Any surplus cream from this process isn't wasted. It's utilized in making butter or anhydrous milk fat. After standardization, the milk undergoes preheating, a crucial precursor to the drying phase. During preheating, the milk is heated to temperatures ranging from 75 to 120 degrees Celsius. The duration of this heating can vary from a few seconds to several minutes, depending on the milk's intended final use and the desired product characteristics. For instance, pasteurization typically occurs at 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds. 
Preheating serves multiple purposes. It causes a controlled denaturation of whey proteins, enhancing the milk's heat stability and shelf life. It also plays a pivotal role in eliminating any remaining bacteria and inactivating enzymes that could spoil the milk. Additionally, preheating generates natural antioxidants in the milk, contributing to its nutritional value. The method of preheating can be either direct through heat exchangers or direct via steam injection or infusion. Indirect preheating often utilizes waste heat from other parts of the production process, making it a more efficient choice. This method helps in reducing overall energy cost, aligning with the industry's move towards more sustainable manufacturing practices. The choice between indirect and direct preheating, or a combination of both, hinges on the specific requirements of the milk powder being produced. For whole milk powder, higher preheating temperatures are linked to an extended shelf life but might result in reduced solubility. This balance between shelf life and solubility is crucial and is carefully managed to meet the product's quality standards. Next comes the evaporation process, starting with milk that has a total solids content of about 9% for skim milk and 13% for whole milk. The goal of evaporation is to increase this concentration to between 45 and 52% total solids. This concentration is vital for ensuring the milk powder's quality and stability once it's produced. The process achieves this concentration by boiling the milk under vacuum at temperatures below 72 degrees Celsius. This lower temperature is crucial as it prevents any damage to the milk's nutritional and physical properties that might occur at higher temperatures. The evaporation takes place in a system of vertical tubes where the milk flows down in thin films. As it travels, the milk is heated, causing the water within to evaporate into vapor. This vapor isn't wasted. In an ingeniously efficient system, it's captured and used to heat the next batch of milk in a subsequent effect. Each effect operates at a slightly lower pressure and temperature than the one before it, allowing the use of the heat from the vapor more effectively. Modern evaporation plants can have up to seven such effects, making the process highly energy efficient. This multi-stage approach allows for over 85% of the water in milk to be removed during evaporation. After the milk has been concentrated in the evaporator, it moves on to the next critical phase, spray drying. This step is where the magic happens, transforming the concentrated milk into fine, dry powder. The concentrated milk, now rich in solids, 45 to 52 percent total solids, is ready for drying. The key to effective spray drying is atomization. This process breaks down the milk concentrate into tiny droplets, creating a large surface area for evaporation and drying. This atomization inside a large drying chamber is achieved using one of two main methods, a spinning disc atomizer or high-pressure nozzles. Both methods aim to create the finest mist possible for quick and efficient drying. Once atomized, these fine milk droplets enter a heated affair. The drying chamber is where the droplets meet a stream of hot air, which can reach temperatures of up to 200 degrees Celsius. Despite the high air temperature, the milk droplets themselves cool as the water evaporates from them they never actually reach the air's temperature. This rapid evaporation is what turns them into powder. The precision in the spray drying process ensures that the final milk powder has an incredibly fine particle size, typically less than 0.1 millimeter in diameter. This fine size is crucial for the powder's solubility, consistency, and ease of use, whether it's being reconstituted back into liquid milk or used as an ingredient in various food products. The final step in the process is packaging. Despite milk powders being significantly more stable than liquid milk, they still require careful protection against moisture, oxygen, light, and heat to preserve the quality and extend their shelf life. Milk powder has a high tendency to absorb moisture, which can quickly degrade its quality and lead to caking or lumping, making it difficult to use. Milk powder is typically packed in plastic-lined multi-wall bags, which can hold up to 25 kilograms, or in larger bulk bins capable of containing around 600 kilograms. These packaging solutions are designed to minimize exposure to the external environment, keeping the milk powder dry and protected from air and light. So, did you know the process of making powdered milk was so complicated? Leave a comment below. 
But that's all for today. See ya!